holy, holy are you, Lord, Yahweh, Yahweh, holy, holy are you, Lord, Yahweh. Your name is healing, your name is power, your name is holy, my strong, strong tower. Good morning, I speak the name, the name above all other names, I speak the name. The name the wind and waves obey. All of heaven's coming down. Fill the earth with the sound of the name. The name of Jesus. Good morning, good morning. How are you all doing? I pray that you have a praise and worship in your heart. And ready for this reading of the word, ready to uh, get to know the Lord a little bit more, deepen our relationship with him, and develop our relationship with each other. Amen. So good morning. This is Lashana Janine Hearn, a year in the Bible, a daily Bible reading where we are getting through the Bible in one entire year. We are in Proverbs chapters 3 and 4 this morning, and then Romans 12. So let's start and let's pray. Heavenly Father, Jehovah God, creator of heaven and earth, we just glorify you and we thank you, Lord God. We come to you in the name of the Lord Jesus, and we thank you that you have given us another day, another chance, another opportunity to wake up breathe your breath in our lungs and to have our steps ordered by you is just an amazing privilege lord god we are very grateful we are full of gratitude lord jesus very thankful that you have chosen us to believe that you have chosen us to trust in you lord god I pray that today be a day of elevation. Today be a day that we level up. Today be a day of increase in wisdom, knowledge, and understanding, Lord God. That your essence fill us, surround us, clothe us, Lord God. And that we be conquerors and walk victoriously in you, Lord Jesus, today. We just thank you, Lord, for, for your word. We thank you for the weapons, for the tools that you have given us. And we thank you and ask that you teach us how to use the weapons and the tools that you provide us, Lord God. And I pray and ask that you continue to send us resources and provide all the things that we need, Lord, to fulfill ministry. We thank you and we glorify you and we pray this in the presence of Jehovah and the spirit of Jesus Yahweh and Jesus holy mighty name. Amen. Amen. Good morning. Good morning. All right. Awesome. So if you're just coming on, we are in Proverbs chapter three and four this morning. And then Romans 12. So Proverbs is, um, Proverbs is full of knowledge and information. And you really, you really should expect increase of knowledge and understanding in Proverbs. So are we ready, ready, ready?
All right, Proverbs 3. My son, forget not my law, but let thine heart keep my commandments. For length of days and long life and peace shall they add to thee. Let not mercy and truth forsake thee. Bind them about thy neck. Write them upon the table of thine heart. So shalt thou find favor and good understanding in the sight of God and man. Though that that those three verses right there has so much power of God for length of days and long life and peace shall they add to thee. We want to walk around with mercy and truth. And it says, bind it about thy neck. Bind it and write them on the table of thine heart. We want the Holy Spirit to fill us with the spirit of truth and, and, and literally, you know, like, like, like we... <clears throat> we adorn ourselves with necklaces sometimes and things like that. So we want to make sure we have that neck that that necklace of mercy and truth and, and in our heart mercy and truth. So trust in the Lord with all thine heart. And lean not unto thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy paths. These two scriptures, verse 5 and 6, the Lord always send me back to. Always. Because, you know, we talk about the difference between the world and living as a saint or a, a child of God or a Christian. We talk about the differences in the world. And in the world, they teach that in order to have a relationship with people, you have to have trust. Well, that's actually going against what this just said. What the scripture says is trust in the Lord with all thine heart. So as a child of God, the Lord is, is, is you got to you got to really really understand that the Lord is a jealous God. And he is he wants all your trust. He said all your trust Trust in the Lord with all thine heart. That means there is no room. If you trust in the Lord with all your heart, there is no room to trust anything or anyone else. There is no room in your heart to trust anything or anyone else. All your trust goes to the Lord Jesus Christ, goes to Father God, okay? If you are a reader of the word, the word says, oh, no man, nothing but love. Love, that's it. That is what we are to give mankind, love. And if you break it down, if you actually go and study, especially if you go and study what love is according to the word of God, not according to the way the world sees love, but according to the word of God, you will not find the word trust in there. Trust goes to God only, only the Lord. It's just like praise and worship. Praise and worship goes to God and God alone. Trust goes to God and God alone. 
So he says, trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not unto thy own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him and he shall direct thy paths. That, that means everything, all your decisions, everything that you're getting ready to do, acknowledge him. In everything. And he will order your steps. He will direct your paths. He will let you, he will make sure you go the right way. He, he, he will always, he'll be right there guiding you but you 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 really have to obey this you have to really in your heart obey this right here verse 7 be not wise in thine own eyes fear the lord and depart from evil to depart from evil that means anything certain movies that you watch certain music that you listen to, uh, places that you make, I mean, depart from evil. Anything evil, remove it out of your life completely. Anything evil. It shall be health to thy navel and marrow to thy bones. Honor the Lord with thy substance and with the first fruits of all thine increase. So shall thy barns be filled with plenty and thy presses shall burst out with new wine. Now, I, I really, really, really want y'all to communicate because Proverbs is not a, one of those books that you need to rush through. Okay, Proverbs is one of those books you really like. I think one of my children woke up. So Proverbs is one of those um, books that you have to really, really, you know, take your time and read. So be not wise in thine own eyes. Fear the Lord. Depart from evil. It shall be health to thy navel and marrow to thy bones. So those people who are who are doing what they can to be healthy the first thing you should be doing your regimen or whatever you come up with to make sure you are healthy you should be reading this word reading the words of god and then honor the lord with thy substance and with the first fruits of all thine increase so it's not even just talking about the tenth of the tithe it's talking about the first fruits of your increase. When you get increased, more substance, money, food, clothes, it doesn't matter. Honor the Lord with your substance. With the first fruits of all your increase, all thine increase. So what, what will he do for you? He sh so shall thy barns be filled with plenty and thy presses shall burst out with new wine. And I am definitely a witness of this. When, when I, whenever I get more and then I share and I put it, I, I share amongst the people of God and I bless the Lord with what I get, I end up getting m like more back. Way more back. So if you have, if, if the spirit of the Lord is saying anything to you, make comments. Don't let me be the only one talking this morning. So verse 11, if, you, if you're just coming on, we are in Proverbs 3, verse 11. My son, despise not the chastening of the Lord, neither be weary of his correction. For whom the Lord loveth, he corrected even as a father, the son in whom he delighteth. Happy is the man that findeth wisdom, and the man that getteth understanding. For the merchandise of it is better than the merchandise of silver, and the gain thereof than fine gold. 
So remember, yet yesterday we just got through reading how when you find wisdom and you find and, and you uh, increase in knowledge, you find God. You know, you you find God. And so if you are lacking in happiness, if you want to be truly happy, if you want to be truly happy in your life, then find wisdom and get understanding. And the only way you're going to be able to do this is to spend time with Jesus and spend time with the Lord and, and stay in the word. And, and you will you will feel he will fill you with that joy and that peace as as your knowledge and the wisdom increases and and you you'll have a smile on your face every day even even no matter if chaos destruction it don't I don't care what comes you are you find wisdom and you and you gain understanding you will be happy and you'll you'll truly know what it means to not have to seek happiness out of someone else like god will fill you with happiness and joy and and peace and all of that so verse 15 says she is more precious than rubies and all the things thou canst desire are not to be compared unto her Length of days is in her right hand, and in her left hand, riches and honor. So you see, you don't have to seek these things. When you find wisdom and get understanding, you don't have to seek anything else because it's all in wisdom and understanding. All you have to do is seek wisdom and understanding and everything else and that's why it says seek ye first the kingdom of heaven you don't have to pursue after money you don't have to pursue after rubies and pearls you don't have to pursue after anything else just heaven wisdom understanding the lord just pursue god and that's it everything else comes with that when you seek wisdom and find it and understanding you don't have you don't have to pursue after anything else you don't have to uh uh you don't have to slave away and 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 things like that trying to trying to provide food on your table or or you know running a business or anything like that pursuing money all that so you don't have to do none of that you don't have to do any of that because it's right there in wisdom it's right there in wisdom so her ways are ways of pleasantness and all her paths are peace she is a tree of life to them that lay hold upon her and happy is everyone that retaineth her. So all you have to do is find wisdom. To find the Lord Jesus Christ, to find wisdom, to, to seek his face, to seek the Lord God Almighty. That's all you have to, I mean, that that right there knowing that all these things will be given to you that should become your main priority from now on like when the moment you wake up lord i need you lord i seek your face lord what do you want me to learn today what 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 is the agenda today lord jesus like that like seek him first seek wisdom knowledge understanding first before you do anything else every time you wake up when you're getting ready to go to sleep 
every moment you can throughout your day. Your priority should be heaven bound. Your priority should be heaven bound to seek the Lord, to seek wisdom, understanding. Because everything you need and everything you want is inside that. Inside wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. Inside seeking heaven first. All things will be added unto you, it says. And you can stand firm on that word. You can stand firm. You will not go without lack. And you will want for nothing. You'll, you'll know in, in your heart that you'll, you have everything that you need. Everything that you need. And again, there, that, there it is again. Happy is everyone that retaineth her. You will be happy. So verse 19, the Lord by wisdom hath founded the earth. By understanding hath he established the heavens. By his knowledge, the depths are broken up and the clouds drop down the dew. I want to read that again. The Lord by wisdom hath founded the earth. By understanding hath he established the heavens. By his knowledge the depths are broken up. And the clouds drop down the dew. My son, let, them, let not them depart from thine eyes. Keep sound wisdom and discretion. So shall they be life unto thy soul and grace to thy neck. Then shalt thou walk in thy way safely, and thy foot shall not stumble. So again, he he's 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 given he's Solomon in this passage is telling his son all the benefits, all the benefits of seeking the Lord, seeking wisdom, seeking knowledge understanding he's he's letting you know everything that will be the favor that will fall upon you when you do this so just seeking wisdom knowledge understanding seeking the lord pursue after jesus everything you need and everything you want will will come the favor of the lord will fall upon you. you you don't have you don't have to you know you don't have to you don't have to pursue money you don't have to pursue uh these things he'll he'll give it to you he'll bless you with it so you will be safe you will be safe. And then in verse 24, when thou liest down, thou shalt not be afraid. Yea, thou shalt lie down, and thy sleep shall be sweet. Be not afraid of sudden fear, neither of the desolation of the wicked when it cometh. For the Lord shall be thy confidence. And shall keep thy foot from being taken. There's a lot being said right here. There's a lot being said in this whole in this whole chapter. There's so much more than what I'm saying that is being said. Be not afraid of sudden fear, neither of the desolation of the wicked when it cometh. For the Lord shall be thy confidence and shall and shall keep thy foot from being taken. So that mean, that means when, when things are going on in the world, don't be afraid. When you when you when you see things going on in the world, 
You are not to be afraid. You are not to run in fear. You are to have the confidence of the Lord Jesus, knowing that you that he said you are going to be safe. You're going to be safe. Your foot, you, you will not be taken. You And you got to trust in that. You got to trust in the Lord with all thine heart. Amen. Verse 27, withhold not good from them to whom it is due. When it is in the power of thine hand to do it. Say not unto thy neighbor, go and come again. And tomorrow I will give when thou hast it by thee. So that means we, we can do a scenario. If someone comes up to you and say, can I borrow $10? Or can you, can you help me out with $10? And you have 20 bucks in your hand. You got 20 bucks in your pocket and you know this. It's saying, don't tell them to go away and come back the next day. You are to give them the $10 right then and there because you have it. He's not talking if you don't have it. It says, withhold not good from them to whom it is due when it is in the power of thine hand to do it. So if somebody does something good, don't withhold that ignore don't 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 withhold that from that person if they if they did something good don't withhold that from from them and then say not unto thy neighbor go and come again and tomorrow i will give when thou hast it by so that means neighbor means anybody anybody somebody come up to you and they say hey you know, in the old days, they would go, can, can I borrow a cup of sugar or, 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 or a bag of flour or, you know, and gradually it, it comes to even money. Can, can, can you lend me or help me out with, with something, you know, whatever it is. And if you have it, it's saying, do not turn that neighbor away. You don't turn that neighbor away. And tell them to come back tomorrow. If you got it in your possession, it's saying, give it. In verse 29, devise not evil against thy neighbor, seeing he dwelleth securely by thee. Strive not with a man without cause, if he have done thee no harm. The, these two people disobey every day they disobey these two right here every day don't 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 cause arguments or or devise evil against people just because they live near you because they live by you don't 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 go out there and 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 and, and create hate in your heart for, for somebody that lives across the street or or anybody and and don't cause you know chaos in their life for no reason they didn't even do anything to you they didn't do anything to you don't don't cause strife in that person's life for no reason it says Envy thou not the oppressor, and choose none of his ways. So pretty much, the, the, you know, don't don't envy those who who are are rich, and who oppresses the people, because because they they um take they take from the people they oppress people. He's saying, don't envy them and don't even follow after their ways. Don't do what they do. Don't follow their ways. Don't do what they do. For the froward is abomination to the Lord, but his secret is with the righteous. 
The curse of the Lord is in the house of the wicked, but he blesses the habitation of the just. Surely he scorneth the scorners, but he giveth grace unto the lowly. The wise shall inherit glory, but shame shall be the promotion of fools. Solomon is really giving his, his sons a lot of information because you got to remember Solomon was the wisest man on the planet. Like all the mysteries, the mysteries and everything of God was placed in Solomon. And you can also look at this as God speaking to his children. Here is a father speaking to his son and God is a father speaking to his children. Through Solomon, God placed a lot of information and a lot of knowledge and wisdom for his children, for his people. And so you, you really want to go back and really read this again because Proverbs is one of those books you got to read again and again and, and take your time with it and break it down because you'll 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 realize there's a lot of things that are in 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 these books that you were not doing many many times have i read proverbs and and i had to ask father god to correct me discipline me show me the truth show me the way you know and 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 um if you obey and if you really listen to the voice of the Lord, I mean, he, he truly, Jesus Christ truly makes you perfect. You do not ever have to seek after perfection because you yourself, your flesh will never be perfect. But, but Jesus Christ in you is perfection. Him, he, he will, he will give you the instructions, directions. He will teach you, what does it say, sound wisdom. He will teach you the wisdom, increase the knowledge and the understanding, and um, just, just pursue after the Lord. That's it. Just pursue after Jesus. That should be your priority. That should be your reason and your why. Amen. Jesus. So good morning. If you are just coming on, this is a year in the Bible, a daily Bible reading where we are getting through the Bible in one entire year. And we are in Proverbs. We just read chapter three and now we'll read four and then we'll move on to Romans 12. And so I'm asking, don't be, don't let this be another morning where y'all don't say anything make some comments because this is this is very very informational it increases knowledge and understanding by reading this and i know the spirit of the lord is speaking to you right now as we are reading so don't let me be the only one uh making comments amen all right, so Proverbs 4. Hear ye, children, the instructions of a father, and attend to no understanding. For I give you good doctrine. Forsake ye not my law. For I was my father's son, tender and only beloved in the sight of my mother. He taught me also and said unto me, let thine heart retain my words, keep my commandments and live. Get wisdom, get understanding, forget it not. Neither decline from the words of my mouth. Forsake her not and she shall preserve thee. Love her, 
and she shall keep thee. This is a thing that we fail to grasp. We fail to grasp this, but today, today we are going to understand. I pray, Holy Spirit, get wisdom, get understanding, and forget it not. Verse 7, wisdom is the principal thing. Therefore, get wisdom. And with all thy getting, get understanding. Exalt her, and she shall promote thee. She shall bring thee to honor when thou dost embrace her. She shall give to thine head an ornament of grace, a crown of glory shall she deliver to thee. Hear, O my son, and receive my sayings, and the years of thy life shall be many. So when we obey Matthew 6, verse 33, Seek ye first the kingdom of heaven. Seek ye first the kingdom of heaven. When we obey that, and it says all these things will be all things will be added unto you. Wisdom, understanding, and knowledge is the first, the principal thing that will be added unto you first and foremost. So you should seek, when you seek first the kingdom of heaven, you are seeking after Jesus. You are seeking the Lord God Almighty. Just like he said, in verse 19, chapter 3, chapter 3, verse 19, the Lord by wisdom hath founded the earth. By understanding hath he established the heavens. By his knowledge the depths are broken up and the clouds drop down the dew. So, wisdom is a priority above anything else. Seek ye first the kingdom of heaven. That means, Father God, when you seek after him, when you seek after the Lord, they, Father God, the Lord Jesus Christ, will give you wisdom, knowledge, understanding. And these are actual spiritual beings within the Lord. These are actual spiritual beings in the Lord Jesus Christ, in God. God, one God, one spirit, and all these things will be added unto you. And you got to embrace it. You got to wear it like you're wearing jewelry. <laughs> you got to wear it like you're wearing jewelry. Embrace her, it says. So... In verse 9, she shall give to thine head an ornament of grace, a crown of glory shall she deliver to thee. So you got to wear it like you're wearing jewelry, wisdom, knowledge, understanding. These things should be, and of course, you're not going to physically see with your physical eyes. Again, I, I, I mentioned how things happen in the spirit first. Then it comes through the physical. And so what's going to come through? She's going to promote you. She's going to honor you. But you got to wear wisdom, knowledge, and understanding like you put on your jewelry and your makeup every day. Men, when you spray that cologne, you got to, just like you spray the cologne on and put the jewelry on and you adorn yourself with all these things, Make sure you are adorned with wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. That should be the first thing you do. Make sure you have dressed yourself with wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. And what did it say? You will add like this. This is life. This bit because Jesus said, "I came to give life more abundantly."
sorry about that um an amber alert just went off so kind of pause my video pause my thing for a bit uh we want to we want to pray for that child right now in the name of the lord jesus christ Jehovah God, protect the child, protect, make sure that they make it home, Lord Jesus, safely. Let no harmful thing come to that child. Right now, you know who they are, where they are. You know who is taking that child. Convict their heart right now, Lord Jesus, and return that baby home. And we just pray this in the presence of Jehovah and the spirit of Jesus, Yahweh. In Jesus' holy, mighty name, amen. Y'all, whenever there's an amber alert, go into immediate prayer for that child. When I mean, no matter what you're doing, pray for that child. Remember, I told you, we got to speak Jesus into the atmosphere, no, into that destruction. You got to speak Jesus into that destruction, into that chaos, into whatever it is that's going on. And so... All right, so we are in Proverbs 4, verse 11. I have taught thee in the way of wisdom. I have led thee in right paths. When thou goest, thy steps shall not be straightened. And when thou runnest, thou shalt not stumble. Take fast hold of instruction. Let her not go. Keep her, for she is thy life. Enter not into the path of the wicked, and go not in the way of evil men. Like you, you got you got to really be careful who you make deals with, who you are in business with. You you got you got to make sure that they are not wicked or evil people or evil men, women. You. When you're when you're doing business and and you're, you know. Uh, I was I was even, I was even being directed to go to a doctor. Somebody was referring a doctor, um, you know. Actually, my mother was even. It was my mother, directing me to go to a doctor, and she wanted me to go to a doctor, and. I asked her, do, do she, do she believe in God? And we ended up in a conversation because that's, that's how serious this is. You don't want, you don't want to be around anybody that's wicked or evil. And, and there are evil, wicked doctors. There are evil, wicked business owners. There are evil, wicked, uh, you know, people who deal with your food. Like, it says, enter not into the path of the wicked. Now, you can't go around. You can't, you could, but you can't, you're not going to go around going, do you believe in God? Do you, what, you, it, there's many times that I have actually done that. But there's so many people in this world that you would literally have to ask each one, do you believe in God? Do you believe in God? So you got to allow the Holy Spirit to, to direct you. That's why it says the Holy Spirit will direct your path. God will direct your path. And, and, he, and it says, thy steps shall not be straightened, and when thou runnest, thou shalt not stumble. So you... The Holy Spirit will give you discernment and let you know. So when 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 the Holy Spirit make you aware, oh, that's a wicked or that's evil. It says, do not go. Do not go into that path. Enter not into the path of the wicked and go not in the way of evil men. Avoid it. Pass not by it. Turn from it and pass away. Meaning, when the Holy Spirit points out to you that that's evil or that's wicked, don't even... If you if you find out there's a grocery store, say, for instance, you find out there's a grocery store and the owner, the owner is evil and wicked. Are you still going to go into that grocery store and shop? 
No. If the owner of that grocery store is evil and wicked, this is telling you, don't go that way. Don't even go in there. Don't even go through past their threshold. Don't, don't go nowhere near anything evil or wicked. It says in verse, uh, verse 16, for they sleep not except they have done mischief and their sleep is taken away unless they cause some to fall. For they eat the bread of wickedness and drink the wine of violence. But the path of the just is as the shining light that shineth more and more unto the perfect day. The way of the wicked is as darkness. They know not at what they stumble. My son, attend to my words. Incline thine ear unto my sayings. Let them not depart from thine eyes. Keep them in the midst of thine heart. For they are life unto those that find them and health to all their flesh. Keep thy heart with all diligence. For out of it are the issues of life. Put away from thee a froward mouth, and perverse lips put far from thee. Let thine eyes look right on, and let thine eyelids look straight before thee. Ponder the path of thy feet, and let all the ways be established. Turn not to the right hand, nor to the left. Remove thy foot from evil so this 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 is very i mean this is very 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 serious and it says even ponder the path that means pay attention to which way you are, which way you are going you know a lot of people would probably say you know Oh, me going into a grocery store or whatever, you know, and, and it, ha it so happens that a wicked, evil person runs this. They, they make money, too. You know, you, you, you can't you can't just let that you can't just let you can't just, you know, accept that. If you, if you know, it says they don't sleep unless they have caused somebody mischief. They, they don't, and, and their sleep is taken away unless they've caused somebody to fall. Like, there are actual evil, wicked people who brings about chaos and destruction. And they do it on purpose. They, 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 they are sent by the enemy. You know, one of my favorite, favorite uh, movies to use for this example is the matrix i don't know if any of y'all seen that movie the matrix but in the matrix neo finds out he been living in a world of lies he's been living in a world of lies and he's been fed been he's been fed grew up and been feeding in a world that 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 has been covered up of, of just lies and when he wakes up he wakes up to the truth pretty much and one scene in the matrix when when um i forgot his name uh in the in the matrix when he's teaching him he's taking him through one of the uh one of the um uh, I don't know what you call it. Uh, one of the things in the computer. And he shows him a woman. He's talking. And he shows him a woman. He says, he says, are you listening to me? Or are you looking at the woman in red? There, There's a scene in the Matrix. And, and he says, everybody. He says, everybody that's still plugged into that system. 
and and this would be the system of darkness we talked about the system of darkness the other day I told I told you about the system of darkness that the world goes by and in this movie he says everyone that's still plugged into that system into the system of darkness is a potential agent and he's talking about a potential agent of the enemy that's exactly what's going on in this world there are wicked and evil people that looks like the woman in red they 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 look like us they they but they are plugged into the system of darkness and they are sent and it's like they're agents for the enemy and so he's saying not only will this be life to your spirit but if you pay attention if you listen if you go after wisdom and knowledge and understanding not only will this be life to you but in verse 22 health to all your flesh for they are life unto those that find them and health to all your flesh so you got to you got to be careful and you got to allow the Holy Spirit to show you and guide your path you will not be able to be guided without the Holy Spirit you cannot live your life without God, period. Because only God can see in the hearts of man. Only God can see in the heart and the soul of man. So he knows who's wicked and who's evil out there. And, and so you have to allow the Holy Spirit to guide you and, and direct your paths. And, and the only way to do that is to trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not to thy own understanding. Amen. I see y'all gonna let me be the only one talking this morning. All right, so good morning. This is A Year in the Bible. If you're just coming on, uh, we just got through reading Proverbs 3 and 4. I definitely encourage you to go back and read it again and again and again and allow understanding and the wisdom and knowledge just increase in you. So we are going to read Romans 12 and then we'll be done for the reading this morning. Amen. And you get to start Monday off on a good note. You get to start this Monday off. All right, Romans 12. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service I have I have to pause right there you know and you know how uh, uh, a lot of people they say oh you must do this because it's it's your uh, your 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 citizen rights or uh, your do they, they tell you to go and vote they tell you to do this you must do this because it's your right well this is your right this is your reasonable service to present your bodies a living sacrifice holy acceptable unto God that is the first thing your duty your duty as a kingdom citizen as a king as a child of God that is the first and foremost thing. And it says, And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. 
You know, a lot of people say, I don't have nothing. I don't have to prove anything. I don't have to prove myself. Uh, yes, you do. Be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is as good and acceptable and perfect will of God. For I say through the grace given unto me to every man that is among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly according as God hath dealt to every man the measure of faith. For as we have many members in one body, and all members have not the same office. Now, when we, when we read this, when we read this, a lot of a lot of uh, uh, church houses, a lot of pastors, a lot of you know teachers, they they um, they break this down to to make it look like it's for that particular church house. No, this is for the body of Christ. That means all over. We are one body, all over. One body, one mind. So we being many, meaning all over, we are all over the world, not under one church house. We're not, it's not just one church house. The whole body, all over. So we being many are one body in Christ and every one members one of another. Having then, okay, so I, I let me start over at four. For as we have many members in one body and all members have not the same office. So we being many are one body in Christ and every one members one of another. Having then gifts deferring according to the grace that is given to us. Whether prophets, prophecy, let us prophesy according to the proportion of faith. Or ministry, let us wait on our ministering. Or he that teacheth on teaching. Or he that exhorteth on exhortation. He that giveth, let him do it with simplicity. He that ruleth with diligence, he that showeth mercy with cheerfulness. Let love be without dissimulation. Abhor that which is evil. Cleave to that which is good. And I looked up the word dissimulation before. And I'll have to look it up again later, but it it pretty much means uh let love be without dissimulation. That means there's no there's no um division, there's no you know there you pretty much are not looking at the differences of each other. It, and things like that love has love loves all unconditionally and so you don't you don't want to you, when you love you love all with no division no no uh separation no none of that and and that's those that are in Christ Jesus cuz it says abhor that which is evil cleave to that which is good be kindly affectionate to one another with brotherly love and honor preferring one another so remember you have to remember in proverbs it says stay away from wicked and evil period stay away from wicked and evil anything wicked and evil you stay away from it so this is specifically talking about those who are in Christ Jesus. Those who believe in the Lord, who love God. Okay? 
because it says abhor that which is evil cleave that which is good be kindly affectionate to one another with brotherly love and honor preferring one another not slothful in business fervent in the spirit serving the Lord so God has God has a business he has an operation and he's operating all of this so your first work your first work should be for the Lord believe in the Lord trust in the Lord do what God wants the will of God present your bodies as a sacrifice every single day every single day fervent in the spirit means to be hot and on fire for the Lord hot and glowing actually if you look it up hot glowing on fire for the Lord so verse 12 rejoicing in hope patience and tribulation continuing instant in prayer that means everything no matter what comes your way instantly go into prayer instantly just like when that when the amber alert came i instantly prayed for that child instantly go into prayer all the time throughout your day distributing to the necessity of saints given to hospitality so we are to make sure all the saints all the children of god have everything we need Anybody that is in Christ Jesus should not be without anything because we are to make sure, and that's across the globe, all across, not just the people in your church house, all across the globe, all children of God, we are to distribute the necessity of saints given to hospitality. Bless them which persecute you and bless, bless and curse not. So there are going to be some people of God who are still learning, who are still, you know, and, and they're, and they're going to do things that are not right. We, we, we find that out in the Old Testament, in Moses' days and all of them, how they were chosen people of God and how they still would turn around and do things that are wrong and against the Lord. So he says, bless them which persecute you bless and curse not rejoice with them that do rejoice and weep with them that weep now this is very important be of the same mind one toward another mind not high things but consent to men of low estate be not wise in your own conceits Recompense to no man evil for evil. Let me read that again. Recompense to no man evil for evil. Provide things honest in the sight of all men. That means when 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 they got your name on their mouth when they're speaking about you when they talking about you the only thing they'll be able to say is how honest you are how real you are how truthful you are you know a, a lot of people have a problem with people talking about them because they know they doing dirt or they doing something wrong but if you obey this if you sit there and obey this provide things honest in the sight of all men because people are going to talk and when they talk they'll have nothing but good things to say even if they're jealous envious whatever they don't like you it don't matter because if you're providing things honest in the sight of all men th th there's nothing else that they can say about you but only good things. Amen. 
Verse 18, if it be possible, as much as life in you, live peaceably with all men. Dearly beloved, avenge not yourselves, but rather give place unto wrath. For it is written, vengeance is mine. I will repay, saith the Lord. This is one of the things that mankind is having a hard time, especially when you, when you, uh, once you've accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, this is one of those things that people of God have a hard time grasping because they'll, they'll, they'll accept Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior, but then, then you hear parents say, Nobody better not ever touch my children because, because, and, and, and you hear it, how, how that, what they'll do and, and, and things like that, or you got people protesting and going out there and taking vengeance upon themselves. And, and that's why, that's why, that's why all the protesting that's going on has caused nothing but chaos and destruction. Because we have a hard time allowing God to take revenge. We, we have a hard time allowing God to be our vengeance. It says, Dearly beloved, avenge not yourselves, but rather give place unto wrath. That means, let God, God is going to get, he's going to be like, uh-uh. But if you go out there and try to take revenge and vengeance upon your own self, he, he going to step back. He going to step back and, and watch you try to do his job. Because that's his job. So instead of taking vengeance, look at what it says. In verse 20, Therefore, if thine enemy hunger, and, and this is very hard for people, Therefore, if thy enemy hunger, feed him. If he thirst, give him drink. For in so doing, thou shalt heap coals of fire on his head. Be not overcome of evil, but overcome evil with good. So, this, this is one of those things that are is the hardest thing for people for children of God to grasp, to understand. So when a man does, when a man or woman or child does something evil to someone, we automatically want to go out there and try to fix it ourselves or take care of it ourselves or get vengeance or, you know, ourselves. And, and, and that's why it seems like that's why it seems like the, the, the problem is not fixed. Because you're telling God, I don't trust you enough to do it. When you take vengeance upon yourself and you take the matters into your own hands, you're literally telling God, I don't trust you enough to take care of it. But a lot of people, and, and they will argue you down and say, I trust in the Lord, but... We got to stand up and fight. You know, no, uh-uh. <laughs> I'm sorry. No. You're acting like the world. And I, I've i been in those conversations. I've been in those conversations before. And I still stand firm on the word of the Lord God. And it says, if your enemy is hungry, feed them. If they're thirsty, give them drink. Because what is it going to do? In doing so, it shall heap coals of fire on his head. I believe in the Lord and stand on this word. I have never had to pick up my fingers and get revenge on anything. I've had my life threatened I've had people, I've had people come after me. I've had things done to me from other people. And I, I stood back and said, Jesus, take care of it. 
And I've been told many, many times that I'm not doing anything even though I tell them that I pray. Do you know that that is the most powerful thing that you could ever do? And that is pray. It says be instant in prayer. But I've been told I'm not doing anything. The injustice to the black people or this and that. I hear this all the time. And I'm going to still stand firm and say, pray. What, what about praying? What about trusting in the Lord? What did the Lord say? What did Jesus say? What did God say? What did God put through Paul and say? Let, give, let the wrath come from the Lord God Almighty. If you really, really want to be a part of the solution, you pray. I'm going to always say that no matter what. I've had and I've I've been in the face of adversity. I've I've literally been in the face of adversity. I have many testimonies where I could sit here for hours and let you know and all I had to do was stand and I and I seriously speak God in the and I say Father God take care of it Take care of me, Father. Father, did you see that? <laughs> you know, and He takes care of it. I've never had to take revenge. I've never had to go out and protest. I've never had to go out and 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 uh, you know argue. I I've never even had to really go up to that person or or situation or anything and tell them anything. You know, I'm, I, I've never even really had to sit there and say, you know, what you did to me was wrong and blah, 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 and all this stuff. And mm, mm, mm. I instantly went into prayer. I go to the Lord and I say, Jesus, and if it's another child of God that, that, that is contending with me, I say, get your son, get your daughter. Get your son, get your daughter. And I let God take care of it. I always let God take care of it. And this is this, this is one of the hardest things and and then and then people wonder why things are happening the way they're happening. I'm going to tell you right now and 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 y'all and I know y'all know that I am specifically speaking on a certain situation because of what's going on right now. Like what is happening? But if you do your study, if you do your study and you really study, you'll find out that protesting is not of God. Protesting and going out there, those are, those are ways of taking vengeance upon yourself. That, that you're, you're, you're going out there saying, I don't trust you, God, enough to get it done. And that's why God is sitting back. Y'all want to know why God is not answering and y'all want to know why God is not moving or doing or anything like that. If, there, if there's anybody on here that's going, how come God is not fixing this problem? How come this is a repeated history? How come this is a, because y'all continue to repeat your responses to what's going on is against God what the word says is against what God told you to do. God said, trust him. First off, God said, trust him in all your heart and lean not to your own understanding. Trust him. Don't trust your way. Don't trust the system. Don't trust anything else on this planet but him. And lean not to your own understanding. And if somebody does something evil or wicked to another man, 
go into instant prayer. And I'm going to tell you, if you truly listen to the voice of the Lord, if you truly hear what the voice of the Lord says, if you truly hear what God says, he is not going to send you out there on the street to protest. He is not going to send you out there to sit there and take matters into your own hands. He is going to give you wisdom, knowledge, and understanding to know that he will take care and he autom and he gives you the instructions well if, if if that evil if if that if that enemy if that enemy is hungry feed him if that enemy is thirsty give him drink because in doing so you will put heaps of fire on their head like god it will convict them when you show them love, when you when you show them kindness. I don't care what they've done. Murder, rob, steal, kill, destroy. It doesn't matter what they've done. God is saying, feed them when they're hungry and give them drink when they're thirsty. And, and this is hard for a lot of Christians because not only doing this, it's, it's testing you. It's testing whether you are true to the Lord. Are you really true to the Lord God Almighty? Are you really going to obey what God says, how God does it, the way God operates are you still going to continue to do the way you do things? This is a this is a true test of faith. Whether or not you really really trust in the Lord God Almighty, and and many many times I have had to call people out on they on their stuff, and 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 it's only because they would come to me for advice or come to me with you know. Uh, with with a situation and and I would have to break it down and let them know that if you take matters into your own hands and you did not seek the counsel of the Lord first you are telling God you don't trust him you're this is what you're saying by your responses sometimes a lot of times And this is how come we see a lot of fallen Christians. We see a lot of fallen and 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 this this that right there exposes a lot of faces, a lot of people because they 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 try to portray and 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 have a life of Christ when Christ is really not in them. So a lot of people are being exposed by situations like what's going on in the world. A lot of people are being exposed and, and masks are being ripped off. And, and you get to see their true intentions. You get to see you get to see who they truly are. And not only that, you, you're being tested. You're being tested and God is sitting back. What are you gonna do? Are you gonna trust me? Are you gonna trust the Lord? Or are you gonna take matters into your own hands? Are you gonna go out there and 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 place yourself amongst the world, the way the world responds and the way the world do things? Are you gonna keep yourself in the system of darkness, or are you gonna walk in light? And so many many times I, many many times. I've had I've had people of God come at me because all I do is sit back and pray. To them they feel like that's not, you're not doing anything. I've seen this. I've I've heard this. And I've actually gotten to conversations and I've had to ask God, 
God, defend me because I'm doing what you told me to do. And that is to instantly go into prayer. Prayer is your weapon of warfare. That is a weapon. Prayer, prayer moves mountains. Prayer moves things. Prayer changes situations. Prayer, not protest, prayer. Trusting in the Lord. And that's why in Proverbs it says, Jesus is your confidence. Not your own power, not your own might, Jesus. And that's why the Holy Spirit been leading us here to speak Jesus into the atmosphere, speak Jesus into that destruction, into that chaos, into, into that situation or that circumstance. Speak Jesus, speak the Lord into it. And you won't, you, you, you'll find yourself, you won't have to, you know, do anything else. God will take care of it. And you got to trust and believe that. You have to trust and believe that. If you are in situations to where you have to go to a doctor or have to get a lawyer or have to go and get a you got to allow the Holy Spirit to tell you who to contact and who not to contact. Uh, you got to allow the Holy Spirit to, to let that person come to you. If God is wanting for his glory, because that's, that, that's what it is, is for his glory. You got to allow God to, to send the right people in your life that that he has placed the solutions in you got to allow the holy spirit to send your resources or send your weapons or send your tools it, god has to position angels and place them in, in, in certain positions when things happen but if you take matters into your own hands he gonna step back and he going uh, and he going to watch you fall because you're not listening you're not obeying him you're not trusting in him and and we read that uh of course we're going to go back through the bible again when we get through the whole bible we're going to go back and do it again but in the old testament and i forgot which which king it was I forgot which king it was, but we just got through reading it in, in some weeks past how this king trusted the Lord, trusted the Lord, obeyed, and at the and after going through all he went through, he ended up seeking the counsel of a wicked man. He ended up doing business or seeking counsel instead of going to the Lord. He went to seek counsel and, and done business with somebody that was wicked and God punished him. God punished him and said, oh, we, we just went through all of this. We went through all of this. God comes in, shows his power, shows who he is, shows how he'll take care of it. And then you turn around and seek counsel and go and try to take matters into your own hands and go somewhere else un instead of going to God first, you will get punished. You will get punished and you will see, you will, you will, you will end up having to deal with the consequences. God is very serious about his relationship with you. God is very, very serious about his relationship with you. And he does not want you putting anything, anyone, nothing before him. Because he's the one that protects your life. He's the one that gives you life. He's the one that's watching and, 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 and making sure that you don't stumble, that you don't fall. He, like God is working working on your behalf 
And for you to turn around and take matters into your own hands is a flat out disrespect to him. Like that is like flat out, di like, and, and, and God is going, so you don't trust me enough to take care of that. But of course, you know, there will be people that say, but, but they murdered or they stole or they did this or they did that. And they must, justice must, justice must. And, and God is going, so I can't take care of it. It's, it's just like when we're teaching our children. It's just like when we're teaching our children. And when, when they end up in situations and circumstances, what do we tell them? Sit down. I got this. Sit down. Let me take care of it. Parents, we tell our children, we'll, we'll take care of it. Don't, don't worry. Don't, don't worry. Don't doubt. I got it. And, and, and this is, this is where God, God is saying, I got it. Just just continue to do what? Seek ye first the kingdom of heaven. Seek after wisdom. Seek after knowledge. Seek after understanding. Trust in the Lord. And I find myself, I've done I've done the study on this so many, many times. I know some of y'all are new coming on. Uh, seeing some of my videos and things like that. But across the board, God is reteaching this very thing over and over and over. Because as a body, as one body, as a whole, we're not getting it. A lot of, a lot, I mean, and you can see it across, you can, you can see you know, it, it hurts my heart sometimes if I see somebody that I know is a child of God, they, 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 they're in the word, they're in the word and they, but they're out there protesting. I, I literally sit back and, and I just pray for, I pray for them. I pray for the person or, you know, I, I know, I know many people that are children of God that are connected in, in, in the Lord and they're out there on those streets amongst the world and it, and it just says do not conform to this world do not do what the world does it says do not conform to this world don't do what they do and I, I, I my heart breaks a lot of times because I, I actually see and watch children of God that I personally know and they're out there protesting or they're out there you know repeating the destruction or repeating the chaos on Facebook posting this and posting that instead of posting who God really is God is my strong arm God is the strong tower I trust in the Lord. Instead of posting those things, instead of speaking God into the atmosphere, they're repeating and posting about what's happening in the world. And 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 I, I, I'm over here praying and praying and praying because, you know, the Holy Spirit is being grieved because children of God are out there throwing the trust that they had in the Lord out the window when they sit there and go out there and, and be a part of the world and, and do what the world does. I know this, I know this is a hard subject. I, I know, I know, but it's in the word and you got to read it again. Proverbs 3, 4, Romans 12. That's that was the reading for today. And you got to stay in the word and you got to read and you got to you got to make a decision 
am I going to truly believe that if I feed my enemy, if I give them drink, that God is going to put fires of coal on their head? Like, you got to believe that God is going to do that, that God is going to take care of it. You have to truly believe that God is going to keep you safe. You got to you got to truly believe that you can walk in the confidence of Jesus. This is not going the things of the world it's not over. It's not over. It's, things are going to be cuz Jesus Christ is coming y'all. Jesus Christ is coming. And so this is not it. This is not over. We go through a circle, a cycle of destruction and chaos because God is pulling out those who will trust him and, and separating us from those who don't trust him. And, and, and so this, this, this cycle is going to continue. Things will continue to happen. It, it's not going to stop. And you have to get it. You have to get understanding. You have to get wisdom and get understanding and wear it on you like jewelry. When, when you see something going on and, and all of a sudden you want to get that urge to go and take matters into your, you got to stop yourself and automatically go in prayer and say, Lord Jesus, and speak Jesus into that situation. Speak Jesus into that atmosphere. Speak Jesus into that chaos and into that destruction. And believe and know that God, he sees it happen. He knows that it was going to happen before it happened. He knows that it was going to happen before it happened. And so this is the lesson. I mean, we got to get it right. We got to get it right. And we got to, we got to trust in the Lord. Trust in the Lord. And I, I, I don't mind being used by God. I don't mind being used by God to, to, to let people know I, I have, my life has been placed in situations and circumstances where I've actually had to step back and let God be God and, and try not to, I don't, I don't do God's job. I don't do God's job. And, and I, I can, I can tell I can tell you uh, some really, really uh, testimonies of things that have happened to me in my life. And, and uh, people in the past, they used to say, man, LaShonda, you got so much patience. Because if that was me, I would have blah, 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 blah. And it's not that I just have patience. God placed that patience in me. But it's not that I just have patience. I truly, truly trust in the Lord. Like I, I've, I've stand back and, and, and bad things have happened to me where, and I stand back and I say, God, take care of that. And, and he, and he did. That's why I can, I can, I can witness to the words of the Lord God almighty. And I can tell you these words are true. These words are real. When, when, when God says, I will keep you safe, he means it. He's very, very serious about his relationship with you. And he will be glorified through your life. He will be glorified and his voice will be heard. And so... I really, really pray and, and, and hope that y'all will go back and, and really study that Proverbs 3 and 4 and then Romans 12. Go back and restudy it again and, and, and literally let it write itself on the tablets of your heart and really, really allow God 
to, to show you him. And let him do what he does. Let him be your father. Let him be your Lord. Let him be your advocate. Let him be your mediator. Let him be your savior. Let him do it. Let him be the one that does it. Amen. So again, y'all just let me talk, talk, talk. So I had y'all on long enough. I'd be glad when y'all start actually responding and, and making comments. So hopefully tomorrow in the morning at 530, when we come back on, y'all will be ready to, to engage in the conversation. But um, just stay in God's presence today and stay in the word and pray without ceasing, you know. And uh, I love you all. Uh, and I pray and hope that you have a wonderful, awesome, beautiful Blessed day on purpose. I will see you 530 in the morning.